The American Diabetes Association commences its 83rd scientific session to showcase game-changing diabetes advances. This is the world's largest diabetes meeting of more than 12,000 leading physicians, scientists, and healthcare professionals from around the globe. And this is ADA TV. I'm your host, Audrea Godfrey, and today we turn to the topic of nutrition. As obesity impacts 42% of American adults and contributes to up to half of all the new cases of diabetes each year, today we will be highlighting the research breakthroughs and the ways community organizations are playing a role in the obesity battle. Only ADA TV will be sitting down with two of this year's award winners, both being honored for their incredible discoveries in diabetes research. And for the first time this week, we find out more about exciting emerging data coming out of one key clinical trial. Plus, there's an app for that. Wait until you see the new way your cell phone can play a role in glucose management. So much to see here on ADA TV and so many ways to watch. You can always find the latest ADA TV episode on our TVs placed throughout the convention center, on the in-house channels at several of our partner hotels, on the shuttle buses to and from the venue, on the ADA Scientific Session website, and on our Twitter and YouTube pages. Now, let's get to it. Dr. Alice Chang kicks things off with what you can expect today at ADA. Dr. Chang? Thanks, Atria. Saturday is going to be an exciting day of learning and sharing. In the morning, bright and early at 8 a.m., there'll be a number of symposia to meet any of your interests. I'll be particularly interested in a symposium on continuous glucose monitoring in type 2 diabetes, Are We There Yet? Should be an interesting discussion, which will include pre-diabetes as well as non-insulin requiring type 2 diabetes. And at the same time, there'll be a diabetes care symposium on the determinants of health and their impact on diabetes. Now next up, the special lectures and addresses are always inspirational. We will hear from Janet Brown Friday on the important topic of improving diversity in clinical trials at 10.15 a.m. and then Dr. Enrique Caballero for the Outstanding Educator in Diabetes Award lecture at 10.45 a.m. Then at 3.15 p.m., I'm looking forward to a debate between beta cell preservation versus technology as the best management for type 1 diabetes, a clinically relevant question that we will need to carefully consider. And then a new feature that I'm super excited to attend is called the Innovation Challenge. This is a situation whereby candidates will have an opportunity to pitch their novel, innovative idea to potential funders, and we, the audience, will get to vote for the best idea, which is fantastic audience participation. That will take place from 4.30 to 6 p.m. So there's lots to look forward to on Saturday. And something we have been so excited about is our sit-down interview with this year's 2023 Banting Medal Award recipient, Dr. Matthias Chup, honored for his seminal discoveries of the first highly effective drugs for human obesity, the dual and triple agonist. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, I must start off with congratulations on Thanks this award. Me. How does it feel to be honored by your peers in this manner? Wonderful. Overwhelming. Well, it's certainly very well deserved. Let's talk about your research that's being honored. More than 20 years ago, you discovered the hunger hormone. What is that? Well, we discovered that a peptide from the stomach called ghrelin is a factor that goes into our blood circulation and talks to the brain and tells us when we're supposed to be hungry, when we're supposed to have the next meal. Now, back then, we were hoping we could block ghrelin and somehow with that treat obesity. But it turns out that just messing with one pathway wasn't enough. So we started to realize we need to do more. We need to understand more signaling pathways and sort of combine several of them to be successful in treating obesity. 
we always looked at obesity as a brain disease. And in the end, some of these dual and triple agonists actually uh, work in the brain and are pretty successful in uh, promoting satiety and blocking hunger and having weight come off. And to that point, your most recent discovery, which is transforming obesity and diabetes therapy and the way that we treat it, are these new classes of therapeutics. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? So we, we teamed up uh, my lab with the lab of Richard DeMarkey, a chemist, and worked together as a team over the last two decades or so. And again, tried a lot of things. And specifically, gut hormones worked really well when you combined them. And uh, with that, not only blood glucose seems to be under better control, but it suddenly becomes possible to lose more than 20% of body weight. This may not be the last, but I think it's, it's a little bit of a breakthrough. It's very encouraging research. Absolutely. Um, you've pioneered a new era of metabolic medicine. Do you see this type of treatment becoming the gold standard for when it comes to treating people with diabetes? A few years ago, all we had to offer for morbid obesity was bariatric surgery, like a gastric bypass. And now we're not quite there yet, but we're getting closer and closer to the same efficacy. I think there will be multiple developments now, and there will be precision medicines in the future for every patient, something tailored, subpopulations that need this or that. There's a lot to do. And with that tailored medicine, hopefully uh, far less unsavory side effects. Well, that's always a goal. You have to have something that's called a therapeutic window. Uh, that's the place between having good effects and not having side effects. Finding the right thing, maybe also for the right genetic makeup of each patient, that will be the future and it'll be the safest way to go. Well, speaking of the future, you've had quite a storied career. What's in your future? What's next? Once uh, obesity has been overcome and controlled, that doesn't mean you can't get off the drugs. So we need w ways to find a maintenance uh, therapy. The other thing we're pursuing is uh, these dual and triple agonists. They, they may be giving us mechanisms and tools for the future, how we can treat other diseases. Very hopeful. Well, congratulations on your award. Certainly well-deserved. And thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me. Turning now to our tour of the institution's blazing new trails in diabetes research, Biomea Fusion is a biopharmaceutical company focused on the discovery and development of covalent small molecules to cure patients with diabetes. Take a look now at how these molecules provide greater target selectivity, lower drug exposure, and the ability to drive a deeper, more durable response. Menin is a protein that controls the number of beta cells. The beta cells produce insulin. The cause of diabetes is insufficient insulin. BMF 219 regulates the activity of menin and in so doing allows us to have a meaningful impact on diabetic patients. Almost 90% of patients had some kind of reduction in A1C. 78% had 0.5 or more reduction in A1C and 50, more than 50% of patients had 1% or more reduction in A1C. So this has been very remarkable data. What it means to me to be able to have this opportunity to target a patient population that's over a half a billion worldwide is to be able to address the root cause. So what a wonderful opportunity that is for us to be able to deliver an agent for the first time in history that can increase your insulin production. to the Netherlands. In 2011, Maastricht University began an extensive phenotyping study focusing on the etiology of type 2 diabetes using advanced state-of-the-art imaging techniques and extensive biobanking. These insights, and hopefully many more to come, are likely to have a major impact on how we understand the disease and we care for the people living with it. I think that what we call comorbidities are not comorbidities at all. Depression, cognitive impairment, more infections, they are true complications of type 2 diabetes. To understand how diabetes affects the health of people throughout. This is the mission of the Maastricht study. 
decided uh, in 2010 to enroll 9,000 uh, individuals from the southern part of the Netherlands and to study them, deeply phenotype them. In the research center we have more than 30 different measurements that we collect. With this data we can perform very nice research and improve the treatment of prediabetes, diabetes or cardiovascular disease. If we want to prevent the extensive vessel damage and neurodegeneration that we consistently see in type 2 diabetes, pre-diabetes is the time when we should act. Early intervention must be key. One of the key highlights of the scientific sessions each year is the emerging science resulting from clinical trials. Here now with some exciting new data from the Surmount 2 trial is Dr. Tim Garvey. The Surmount 2 trial was a phase three, a randomized placebo controlled trial, really investigating the efficacy and safety of terzepatide to treat obesity in patients with type 2 diabetes specifically. Trisepatide is a, a dual agonist peptide that binds both GLP-1 receptor as well as GIP receptors. Yeah, we really specifically wanted patients with obesity, uh, that's BMI of 27 or above, and also type 2 diabetes. What we're looking for really amounts to a therapeutic gap uh, in, with our current treatment modalities, and that is the, our limited ability to produce weight loss in patients that have both obesity and diabetes into the 15% range. Uh, and that's important because once you achieve that 15% weight loss, that's sufficient to treat and prevent a broad array of obesity-related complications. Uh, but up till now, the best we've been able to do in clinical trials is a weight loss of 10.6% on currently available approved medicines, we're not into that 15% range. So that's what we're hoping Tazerpatide can do. Uh, and as I said, that's what our trial is really designed to do, treating obesity in diabetes with uh, Tazerpatide. When it comes to diabetes treatment and management, focusing on everyday life barriers and the challenges that impede self-management is a crucial component. The DECIDE self-management program is built on the science of problem solving for behavior change and has proven effective in improving diabetes outcomes. Diabetes self-management education and support is a standard of care, but there are inequities. The DECIDE self-management program is designed to bring to high-risk populations effective diabetes self-management training that changes behavior, and improves clinical outcomes. DECIDE is a nine module structured curriculum. And what it does is it uh, walks participants step-by-step step through problem solving training so they can incorporate self-management into their everyday lives. The DECIDE program is changing lives and it's helping people to be able to manage their health, particularly people who otherwise uh, do not have good access to care or, or sometimes go unseen and unheard. And this program is about empowering people to improve their health long-term. And keeping the community impact component in mind, we know that community environment is a major driver in health outcomes for its population. Well, in Indianapolis, the Diabetes Impact Project is providing residents the resources and support they need to spearhead these changes. The Diabetes Impact Project Indianapolis Neighborhoods is an eight-year initiative that is funded by Eli Lilly and Company and was started because a number of stakeholders in the community were identifying lots of escalating rates of diabetes and said, we need to do something about it. I've lived in the near Northwest consistently for the last 14 years, um, but then off and on since I was a baby. I was actually born here. 
Too many times folks come in and don't ask the community what they want and instead put in what they believe they want. We have to learn how to be engaged correctly by speaking with and not to the community. These health disparities that exist in these communities have taken decades, generations to put into place. We can't expect to be done with that in an eight year period. So we have to be building for these projects and things to be sustainable and go beyond. In memory of the father of diabetes epidemiology, the Kelly West Award is given to an individual who has made significant contributions to the field of diabetes epidemiology. And this year, that individual is Dr. Alka Kanea, and we are so thrilled to have her in studio with us now. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And we have to start off with congratulations. Thank you. What an honor to receive this award. What does it feel like for you to be honored by your peers in this manner? Um, it's overwhelming and it's very, very gratifying. I feel really privileged to share the work of our team. You have focused on Asian American health disparities over the past 20 years. Why has that been your focus? I think there's just been a lack of good data in Asian American populations. Asian Americans are the fastest growing subpopulation in the United States. We've uh, disaggregated Asian American data in many different ways using national data sets as well as local regional data sets. And what we found is that diabetes prevalence is highest among South Asians, followed by Filipinos, and then East Asian groups like Chinese, Japanese, and Koreans have sort of much lower prevalence overall. And what's interesting about that is um, the reasons that they have diabetes are actually quite different if you start to do a deeper dive. And even the outcomes of diabetes are quite different. You developed the South Asian uh, Longitudinal Cohort Study. Is that some of the data that you gathered from that study? It's called the Masala Study. We've been doing the study for now almost 13 years. Uh, we've been seeing 1,150 participants over time. And yes, uh, the South Asian phenotype is quite unique. It's very high risk for high heart high blood pressure, diabetes, and heart disease, and we're trying to really understand why. What do you hope your results will mean for the overall treatment and prevention of type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease? Some of our most interesting data is looking at the different diabetes subtypes among the South Asians in Masala and comparing them to other U.S. groups in the multi-ethnic study of atherosclerosis. And what we see is that all groups have five different types of type 2 diabetes, but the one that's most common in South Asians is the severe hyperglycemia type, which is the one with the lowest beta cell function and the highest levels of glucose and that group is actually the group that goes on to develop more heart disease. And so uh, that really points to the fact that we need to be treating people maybe who are South Asians who have this type of diabetes differently. Very fascinating. Incredible work. Well, we certainly appreciate all of your hard work and congratulations on your award. Very Thank well you. deserved. Have your smartphone handy and come with us to witness a remarkable advancement in diabetes management. Oregon Health and Science University presents Daily Dose, a revolutionary smartphone app designed to enhance glucose management for individuals with type 1 diabetes. Daily Dose is a smartphone app that receives data from wireless glucose sensors, continuous glucose monitors, and connected insulin pens. And then that data goes into a machine learning algorithm which uses that data and analyzes patterns from the past week to determine if there were any problems with the person's glucose management. If patterns were found that showed that there was excessive hyper or hypoglycemia at certain times of day, the app would provide a recommendation on adjusting insulin dosing at that time of day or adjusting behaviors. You know, managing diabetes is, is a difficult mathematical problem often, and so many different daily activities that I do actually factor into how my blood sugar responds daily. And having something that can tell you 
what is needed for that dose for that hour or for those six hours or for after exercise um, before bed is something that's really helpful because it takes away that guessing game that you have. You don't have your endocrinologist in your back pocket, but with Daily Dose, you do. Glucare solves metabolic syndrome differently. They think outside the box in all aspects of their care model. In both what happens to patients inside the clinic and outside, they hold nothing sacred when it comes to the management of patients with metabolic syndrome, and they are pushing the boundaries of how to tackle the metabolic disease. In the UAE, one in four individuals are diabetic. Why in a country where access to care is not an issue, is 75% of our diabetic population poorly controlled? For us, that was rooted in something very specific, which we felt that the healthcare system wasn't architected properly to deal with one of the major root causes of metabolic dysfunction, which is ultimately the manifestation of a genetic predisposition. And that manifestation is driven largely by behavior. So Glucare Health is a hybrid digital therapeutics platform. By leveraging digital therapeutics, wearable technologies, and artificial intelligence diagnostics, we can provide personalized care and ensure that patients receive the support they need to affect effectively manage their metabolic disease. Our outcomes are second to none. There's almost a moral responsibility to now grow. We think that there should be glue case everywhere. Our ambition is to cater to a million diabetics in about five years, and we're on the path to do that. Now to an announcement. Be sure to wear red tomorrow. We will all be rocking the red on Sunday, June 25th to show our support of the ADA and our mission to prevent and cure diabetes and to improve the lives of all people affected by diabetes. Together, we can achieve a world free of diabetes and all its burdens. Red merchandise is available for purchase at the Shop Diabetes store located in the upper level sales pavilion. And remember, every purchase supports diabetes research, advocacy, awareness, and educational programs. There is so much to see here on site. Make sure to stop by the sales pavilion on the upper level at the Shop Diabetes Bookstore to stock up on the latest professional publications and resources and show your support with ADA gear. And don't miss the membership lounge. You can relax, have a snack, and charge your device while ADA staff answer any questions about membership renewal or benefits. And in the exhibit hall, the ADA booth is a must-see while you're here this week. With that, we wrap up day two here at the American Diabetes Association's 83rd Scientific Session. We hope you've enjoyed today's content. If you missed any part or if you loved something so much you'd like to see it again, remember, you can always find the latest ADA TV episodes on our TVs placed throughout the convention center, on the in-house channels at several of our partner hotels, on the shuttle buses to and from the venue, on the ADA Scientific Session website, and on our Twitter and YouTube pages. We are only halfway through this exciting week and we look forward to seeing you right back here tomorrow on ADA TV. Until then, have a great day.